Hey there, this is day two of the 734 um, lesson. And so what we're going to do is, again, we're going to focus on uh, algebraic equations and equalities. Um, and inequalities, I apologize. So equations and inequalities. This one will very much be more focused on the inequality side of stuff. And so that'll be kind of our focus. Um, in my first video, uh, I wanted to mention too that I'll even try to go a little bit quicker through this because I know you guys can pause and go back through the video. I apologize that uh, this bar is basically on the right side because I bump it with my hand and then it jumps to a page. I'll do the best I can to avoid that, but <coughs> but it will happen. So in here, um, just a reminder, we have all that in-class work that you would have through those individual pages. These math notes are so helpful. In fact, I think they even reference into it in this reference to it in this one. And then um, lastly, uh, we have um, our core answers are here. Uh, whoops, this is for you to kind of help you uh, to make sure that you're doing okay through the core problems that we're talking about. And then we can jump through and see um, the homework here. And then from the homework, I also, as normal, shared the homework answers like you would always see in Canvas. But again, it's your work that's really important, so you need to make sure you show your work. All right, so let's get going. Uh, 716, solutions to a linear inequality. Moqui is studying for a Spanish and history final exam. He knows that he needs to spend more time studying Spanish than history. He decides he'll spend half an hour more studying Spanish than history. <coughs> Let H represent the amount of time Moqui spends studying history. So we've defined the variable. The variable is H, right? And that H um, is how much time spent studying history. Write an expression using H that represents the amount of time he spends studying Spanish. So when we go back up here, spends at least a half hour more on there. So what we'll do is we'll represent that as H plus 0 0.5, or you could have put one half as a fraction. Um, H again representing history. Um, history time plus another half hour um, will equal our Spanish. So. Moqui spends more than two hours and 15 minutes studying for Spanish. How, how does this um, amount of time compare to the expression you wrote in part A, write an inequality to represent this situation? So what we recognize here is <clears throat> that, whoops, we recognize that um, two hours and 15 minutes studying for Spanish, right? Um, you're going to be studying, we'll spend a half hour more um, studying Spanish than history. So when we go back down here, we know that the two and two hours and 15 minutes can be represented as two and a quarter, right? Because 15 is one fourth of an hour. And what do we know about that? Well, we know that it is going to be less than, whoops, it's going to be less than what we came up with here. Remember, this represents the amount of time studying Spanish. And if you spend more than that studying for Spanish, then we know that that 2.25 has to be less than the H plus 0 0.5. Again, this is how much time is spent using Spanish. But since we know we did more than that, this is an inequality that represents that. All right. Um, with your team, try to list all the possible amounts of time that Moqui could spend studying history and how many possible answers are there. <coughs> so we see that um, we have the H plus 0 0.5. Well, we could just say H is 3, right? Well, if H is 3, 3 plus 0 0.5 is 3.5, right? And is that uh, greater than, right? when we put that in here, is that greater than the 2.25? You bet it is. Um, couldn't I choose a different number? Sure, you might have been thinking four or five or 10. Well, guess what? All of these numbers are going to be greater than the 2.25. Except for there is a bottom, right? There means that you could say the history 
what if you had spent uh, zero hours on your history, right? So H is zero hours. You spend no hours on your history. Well, zero plus is 0 0.5, oops, is a half hour, right? Well, that's le that's not less than, right? That's not less than the 2.25. So there is a list of ones that we um, will find that will work. What we found out is uh, there is a bottom. We don't know what it is yet. We'll work on that yet, right? A minimum amount of hours we have to spend. But we do know this, that there are an infinite amount of numbers. Because I could choose 3, 3 3.5, 4, 4.5, uh, 4.67, 4.6. Uh, three three hours right I could go up to a hundred hours so what we can say is that there is an infinite possible infinite possible answers right an infinite amount because we could go up to infinity What's the smallest amount of time? Well, that goes back to what we were saying right up here, right? That's what we we're saying right there. That's the part we need to figure out, right? So what is that? What's the smallest amount? So if we talk about the smallest amount, right, we go back to our inequality um, that we had right up here. The 2.25 is less than h plus 0 0.5. 2.25 is less than h plus 0 0.5. And you're looking at that, and maybe you already had figured out that answer, right? What number could that be? Well, what we could do is we could start plugging in numbers and guessing, right? We could just guess away. If we decided to say that h was 2, we would say um, 2, right? plus 0 0.5 is 2.5. Is that the smallest one? No, it's not. We could do smaller, couldn't we? Let's try H is 1.5, right? One and a half hours. 1.5 plus another half hour is equal to two hours. Well, is two hours less, less than, you know, or is it, I mean, 2.25 is that less than the 2 and the answer is no so what we've just figured out right now is that it's somewhere between 2 and 1.5 right 2 and 1.5 so what we can figure out is um, when you do try it 1.75 exactly whoops exactly in between that will work 1.75 plus 0 0.5, um, 1.75 plus 0 0.5, we line up our place values, that's 5, 2, carry that 1, there it is, there's the 2.25. Does that mean that 1.75 would work? Well, listen very carefully to how this is written. 1.75 plus 0 0.5 is 2.25, right? is 2.25 less than, here it is right here, 2.25. And the answer is no, it's not. So what this tells us is 1.75 is, is right next to the minimum, meaning 1.751 works. 1.76 works 1.77 works but we can't exactly use 1.75 because again 2.25 is less than 2.25 no 2.25 is not less than 2.25 right so we just need to choose a number slightly larger than that right um most would most of you would probably say um something you know would say that but it needs to be slightly larger than that and as we kind of talked about now to answer this last question what is the largest amount of time quite honestly we could 
um, go an infinite amount of time. That would be foolish, but we realized that in math we couldn't go that far. So now we're going to talk about graphing inequalities with one variable. All right. So graphing inequalities, um, we found in the previous problem there are many solutions. How can we show all these solutions? One way is to write an inequality statement such as p is less than or equal to 234. Another way to graph the solutions on a number line is to graph them on a number line. Um, so here, this is what we're going to do, right? We have our our thing right there, our um, inequality. Start by drawing a number line and plot as many of the points as you found in part C of the problem as you can, right? So I'm going to actually use all of these that we used here. I'm going to use purple as a um, option here. So we tried 1.5. We tried two, we tried, uh, we found out 1.75 is kind of the bottom. We actually know that those would work. We have some other numbers up here that we tried, right? So let's try to graph some of those. We even tried zero, right? And we realized that won't work. So let's go down here. We're gonna draw a number line. And our key number, right, is 1.75 right here. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to use um, use that as our key, right? So I'll draw my number line. Here's my zero. There's one. There's two. And I put arrows on both ends representing that they go on forever. We're going to put our halves and quarters in because that's what we're going to need for this one. I bumped it. There it is. I accidentally did it. Um... Start by drawing, and now plot as many points as you found in C, uh, 116C. As you plot more and more points in the number line, what do you notice? Well, let's plot the points that work. Let's plot them with blue. <coughs> what points did work? Well, two worked. Um, 1.5 did not work, so we won't use that one. Technically, 1.75 did not work. 1.751, 1.76, 1.77 would. So numbers that are just on this side of that line. So here's some numbers here, right? Let's go check some other ones up above. Um, 3, 3.5, 4. They don't all fit on our thing, but let's go take a look. Um, we know that 3 works. 4 works. So there's some numbers out here that work, right? Now let's try... Oops, I did make a mistake, didn't I? I apologize. Those um, should have been at one point something, not there, right? I apologize. Sorry about that. Ah, I bumped that again. These numbers work, right? Not there. There we go. Now let's mark in red the ones that did not work um 1.5 did not work zero did not work 1.75 did not work so here we go let's graph those 1.75 is right there right we also said zero didn't work we also said that um what was the other one we had up here 1.5 does not work, right? So what we find is that a lot of these don't work, and a lot of those do work. And that's how we're going to start to show how we do that. And the more numbers we pick, the more dots we would get that work, right? We could just keep picking, okay? What would happen if, uh, what would it look like if you could plot all the values to make the inequality true? Well... Quite honestly, there's an infinite amount, right? So basically, it would just be, um, whoops. It basically be what? A, a big line, right? A line that is going to go off in that direction. That goes to the right. And I don't like that language. That's not quite the right language. Instead, what I'd like to say, it goes, it goes to the right, and maybe we'll add here towards infinity, right? 
there we go, going off to infinity to our right. Okay. So the blue ones represent, again, all of those numbers that work. Okay. Where would the, uh, where would the line that is formed by the plot, plotted points end? Right. Where would the boundary points of the line be the solution? Well, we already talked about that it goes towards infinity, so there's no what we call boundary on the right side. It's going to go on forever. But what about the left side? Let's go back up here. Right. If we focus on just the blue ones, we know that they could go on forever and ever and ever. But what we should focus on is right there. There is an endpoint, right? And that endpoint is at what number? 1.75. So, whoops. So, what are the boundary points? Right. There was no boundary, I guess you could say. Nothing that's going to stop it. to the right, or we could call it the upper boundary, right, because it's a larger number. I'm running out of room. There we go. But we do have 1.75 is the, whoops, left boundary, right? That's where stuff changes right there, right? Is the boundary point for this problem part of the set, set of solutions? And what this means is, right here, this that sentence right there. Is, whoops, I thought I clicked on that, I did not. Basically, let me reinterpret that, that question for you. Does 1.75 work? And we already determined before that it does not. So if the bar boundary point is part of the set of solutions, then it would be represented as a filled-in dot. If, however, the boundary point is not part of the set of solutions, then you might represent. Then how might you represent the center number line? So let's kind of focus on what they're saying. They're saying if we have a number line, and we have a boundary point point that is part of it. Right? It's a filled-in dot if it is part of it. That's not, um, that doesn't work here because 1.75 doesn't work. Since it doesn't work, we cannot use a filled-in dot. Okay, so for this problem, we cannot use one. For our problem, what we're going to actually do is we are going to have... I'm going to put them in here. What we have is an open dot. It's an open dot. So we want to represent that we cannot include that number 1.75. So it's like we go right up to 1.75, but we're not going to include it. Okay. It's a really hard and brand new concept for us to understand. So we need to read the math notes box, and we're going to check to see how we draw that number line accurately, then write an inequality represent that solution. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at that. That is here. An equation always has an equal sign, right? An inequality has a comparison symbol, right? So there's the uh, equal sign right, right there. Um, but an inequality has a less than, greater than, or equal to type, right? Okay. To solve and graph an inequality with one variable, first to treat the problem like it were an equality. Well, we kind of did that in 7.3.4 day one by using those opposite operations, those inverse operations, we call them. The solution to an equality is called the boundary point. For example, to solve this inequality here, we treat it like an equality, and we find out that x tw has to be 12, right? 12 is the number. That boundary point for the... So now what we can do is that creates the boundary point for this. 12 is the boundary point. Since the original inequality is true when x equals 12, so what they mean is... 
if x were 12 here, 12 minus 4 is, which is equal to 8, right, is great, whoops, why is this going goofy here, is, uh, is greater than or equal to 8, right, because this whole thing is 8. Is 8 greater than or equal to 8? The answer is yes, it is. So what they're telling you is, since it is true for x equals 12, then what we do is we make it a solid point. And what do I mean by that? That is shown right there. Okay, see that solid point? If it were not true, like in our problem with Moqui, then we would have to do an open dot. Then what they're doing is they're checking the numbers on both sides. They don't know what, what they're doing is saying, you know what, should we shade the left side or do we shade the right side to show all the points that work? And what they do is they test first with 8 and they test with 15. And they find out that if you put in 8, 8 minus 4 is 4, right? Is 4 greater than or equal to 8? And that's false. That means... You know what where the 4 is? The 4 is right here. That didn't work. That's not working. So when we try 15, 15 minus 4 is 11. Is 11 greater than or equal to 8? Yes, it is. It's true. So what we do is we shade that side. So what you get is you get this right here. Okay, so what's happening? Number 1, we found the boundary point. We make it an open dot or a closed dot, dot depending on if it's equal to or not. Notice they do not have that there. Then we decide which side we want to shade with all the solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here. And we're going to, we've read this, so we've already decided it's an open dot. So let's graph this down here. I always like to put a zero in when we graph inequalities. It makes it easy to know where everything is at, right? We already determined it's an open dot, meaning 1.75 does not work. We already know that it works for all of the stuff to the right, so you can just take your pencil and you can shade it in. And it helps to shade the arrow in, indicating the direction. Okay. Each April, blue bonnet wall wallflowers are commonly seen throughout Texas. One botanist claimed that the <clears throat> number of acres of blue bonnet wallflowers in Gillespie County this year could be estimated by the inequality. W minus 30 is greater than or equal to 110. The variable W represents the number of acres. Some local residents guessed that there were 100.25, 126, 140, 152.8, or 163.5. By the way, I made a mistake in the first file I put up there, and it might say 16312. That's because I had to fix that and make it a half. Um, test these values to see which of these are possible for the acres of the wild this year. All right, let's test them. Okay. So we have W minus 30. It's greater than or equal to 110. So what we're going to do is we're going to check these numbers and see if they work, right? So if I did 100.25 and I subtracted 30, where the question is, is it greater than or equal to 110? So 100.25 minus 30. When we subtract, we got 25, um, 0, and that turns out to be 70, 70.25. So now the question is, is 70.25, that's for this, is it greater than or equal to 110? The answer is no, it's not, is it? So we're just testing them out. So 100.25, we'll just put it across so it's saying it did not work. So we could try 126 now. <clears throat> 126 minus 30. What does that equal? That's going to equal 96. All right. Well, is 96 greater than or equal to 110? The answer is no, it's not. So we got to cross that one off, don't we? 
So let's try another one. Oops. Let's try 140. It was 140 minus 30, which equals 110. Okay. Is 110 greater than or equal to 110? Yes, it is. We'll circle it. Well, you could probably figure it out that that one and that one will work too. Let's write an inequality to show all the possible values for W, right? So what did we find? The key, the key number was right there. It's the 140, right? Because that's kind of the 140 minus 30 makes it greater than or equal to 110. That's the magic number. So what we can say is we can say W needs to be what? Greater than or equal to 140. Show all the possible numbers on a, uh, on a number line. So I would just keep it simple. I would start with a zero and I would show my 140. I don't need to draw all the other numbers in there. What do we know about W? Right, all those acres, that's got to be greater than or equal to 140. So in other words, we found out that 110 did not work. 126 did not work, but these numbers did work. So we, since we, whoops, dropped the pen there. Um, since we know that 140 works, we put a solid dot there. Right. And then what do we do? We shade all of the numbers that did work, and that's over here in this direction. Okay. Why? Again, 100 and 100.25 did not work, right? So that would be somewhere over here that did not work. 100.25. We also tried 126 up here. 126. That one did not work. These are the numbers that did work. Okay. Croaky the Frog's um, unknown position on number line can be represented by the variable P. Croaky's choreographer established Croaky's position with an inequality. P plus 7 is less than 18. Show all the possible positions for Croaky on a number line and write an inequality representing his positions. So what we're going to do is we need to write the inequality but then also show that number line, right? So we need to find those critical values for that. What's the critical number that's going to work right in here? Okay. So as we look at that, you could probably, we can do what they said in the math notes box, right? P plus 7. We're going to treat it like an equality. Treat it like an equality first. <clears throat> and what that allows us to do is figure out using our inverse operations, 18 minus 7, we get 11. So P would equal 11. That means that's our boundary point. Okay, right, there's our boundary point. So we could graph that, right? So we graph that and we have zero and we got 11. All right, now at that boundary point, we need to figure out does it actually work, right? Does it work? So we'll go back here and we're going to test it. 11 plus 7 is 18, right? That is equal to 18. Is 18 less than 18? Nope. So since it's not, we put an open dot right here, okay? Now if we refer back to those math notes that we talked about earlier, we just need to test. We're going to test the number zero. Does it work? Right? Does zero work? Whoops, I shouldn't put a dot there. That's not really good. I'm just saying that I'm checking it and I put a I put a um I didn't want to make it sound like make it look like we were putting an open dot there, right? So we're checking zero. So over here in the side here I'm going to do zero plus seven. Is that less than 18? Well, let's look at that. 0 plus 7 is 7. Is 7 less than 18? Yes, it is, right? Oops, I don't know why I delayed. So that was, that one worked, okay? So what we've already figured out is that it should be shaded probably this way. But you know what we can do? We can do a check. Let's do um, 12. We can check 12. I'll choose a different color here. 
12 plus 7 less than 18. 12 plus 7 is 19. Is 19 less than 18? Nope. Right, so the number 12 did not work. Since it did not work, we don't shade that side, right? So we did shade this correctly. Okay. Shade this side. Okay. This is a... Um, well, we'll stop here. This is the extra problem. At this point, um, it's not part of the core problems. You could stop right now if you want. Um, and get into the homework. Otherwise, this is an extra one just to practice some stuff. Okay. Um, this one we would just use inverse operations. So I would do 46 plus 10. 46 plus 10 is 56. So x um, would equal 56. That would be the only number to my solution. Okay. The only number to my solution. Now, by the way, we can graph that, right? Which is what it asks us to do on the number line. And what I do is I just do this. Here's my zero, there's 56, and I just make a dot there, 56. Man, that's a nice number line. I go for those any day. So over here, on to B, we treat that just like an equality. So I would do 30 plus 24, right? Here's, I should have wrote my equality like our math note, uh, note said. The so we add that up and what do we get? We get fifty four. Don't we? We get fifty four. So what we notice is that C right is going to be, and we don't know yet if it's greater than or less than. It's the same symbol here in this case. Greater than or equal to fifty four. Right. Greater than or equal to fifty four. So I would do this one. I would say there's my zero, here's my 54, right? Does 54 work? Well, if it's equal to 54, we can put a solid dot, right? And you can start to cheat without having to test numbers. You can say, I'm looking for all the values of C that's greater than 54. Well, that goes in this direction, right? Those are all greater, aren't they? But we could test it, right? We can test this for sure. Let's try 100. Well, let's choose a big number like 100. We're going to run 100 in here, right? 100 minus 24. Is that greater than or equal to 30? Right? That's the question. 100 minus 24 is 76. Is 76 greater than or equal to 30? The answer is yes. And that's why we shade over here on the 100 side, right? Okay. Um... Right, we go to C, W plus 8. We're going to treat it like an equality, like it says. We're going to say 28 minus 8 is 20. So W is, we're going to use the same symbol, right, is less than 20. We would graph that, right? Here we go. There's our 0. There's our 20. So if we do that, what we're going to do is, is it equal to 20? Does 20 work, in other words? Well, if we put a 20 in here, right, this side is 28. Is 28 less than 28? The answer is no, it's not. So we have to put an open dot here, don't we? Then we would, we can test our numbers and we find out that these numbers would be our ones that work. So on the uh, D, we would do, again, we do those inverse operations. 20 minus 9 is 11. So as 11 is equal to E, right? Graph that. 0, 11. And then the last one, we have a division to get rid of that division. The inverse operation is multiplication. So we would say 15 times 4. That's 60. So Y equals 60. Right, that's the inverse operation of division. There's my 0. Here's my 60. And I make a dot. Right? Now keep in mind I made a dot just because they're equals. Okay? There's no less than greater than stuff. No shading. Notice here there was an equal sign and B. That's why I have a solid dot. Right? A has an equal sign. That's why I have a solid dot. 
C has just a less than, no equal to part. That's why I have an open dot. Okay. This is a very, very tough concept and a really hard thing. This is the last section of 7.34, meaning that it's not going to be something that's going to be easy for you to understand. It's going to get, take some practice. Hang in there. We'll get through it. Be sure to show your work on all of your stuff that you do.